Well, the Hens are mere hours away from their home opener. The Walleye just days away from their Kelly Cup playoff opener. The arena downtown, not a bad place to start a series. After setting a record for attendance again, it will definitely be a hostile environment for the Fuel, who did not play well against the Fish during the regular season. The voice of the Walleye, Matt Melzak, in studio earlier this week with his thoughts on playoff hockey. This year's team was built for this. Not necessarily last year with the great run, but with bringing in the bigger guys. Remember, I remember at the beginning of the sure. year, we're talking about 6'5", 220, 6'6". Six, six. You know, this was this team was built for this playoff run, and we're going to see what, what happens starting Friday night. Yeah, Friday night will be the first test of it, and to see how it all has evolved and, and that, that – that idea that Dan Watson and Andy Delmore had when they got into the offseason last year is we need to make sure we can take the pounding of a playoff yep. run. Not just a playoff series, a playoff run. Because, you know, you are going to get tested. Not every series is going to go quickly. Uh, you look at last year, that Kalamazoo series. How much did that wear down Toledo when they got into that third round against Colorado? When, uh, you know, you start running into big bodies of Fort Wayne, even though you won that series quickly, still big team kind of wore you down then you got into Colorado big team wearing you down and those kind of things now will this team be able to take that longer uh, be able to deliver a little bit more of that as we've seen over the course of the year yes so that the, I mean obviously time will tell whether that pays right. off in the end or not but that was the plan going in to so get a little bit bigger have still that skill level which Toledo does have have those guys that can produce your guys like Tyler Barnes and Kyle Bonus and the, the likes but you got to have bodies like the Connor Chris but Christian Hilbrick with yes. his size and yes. his ability in front of the net will be so key in the postseason. And then, of course, special teams, you got to be able to do well on your power play and penalty kill. Well, and, and this is not a criticism. This is just a, an observation from last year. The officiating is definitely different in the postseason than it is in the regular season. The whistles are swallowed a little bit more. There's a lot more contact. We saw it in Colorado. We sat up there in the booth and couldn't believe the Spink brothers were being held both of them by I, one guy, and there's no call. So we know we're going to see a tougher, more physical brand of play here in the second season. Yeah, there's no question about it. It, it, it It's a shame to me because I think I think they should. I think the NHL has done a nice job of this. The American Hockey League is catching up to that as well, and eventually the ECHL will get to that. You have the two-referee system. Some of these guys, the, the part of the problem that they have is, is it me to call that or is it the other guy to call that because they're so used to working by themselves. Now they get into playoffs, you're responsible for this quadrant, you're right. responsible for this quadrant, and and those things can take some time to adjust for referees too. But it is one of the things that I hope that the ECHL starts to catch up with the other leagues on, is calling penalties in a playoff. Yeah. We'll see how they call them starting this Friday, 7.30, right here on BCSN Indy, Toledo, round one of the Kelly Cup playoffs.